I'd like to introduce Angela from Ireland who has alopecia. Welcome, Angela. Hi. Could you tell us your story? Uh, I can indeed. I think it was December 2002. I felt a little velvety patch uh, on uh, just on the back of my neck. And uh, I thought, how cute, it feels so soft. Uh, little did I realise what was to come. And that little velvety patch was the start of my alopecia. And it was basically the size of a 50 pence piece that eventually took over uh, my hairline and took away most of the, the back of my hair. Uh, so I lost uh, all of my dark brown hair. It was falling out everywhere. So when I looked to the floor or in the shower or in my bed, uh, there was hair. So obviously, yeah, the first thing you think is, right, okay, I need to go to the doctor, I need to go to the hospital and see what this is. So I was referred to Belfast City Hospital. It seems I knew as much about the condition as they did. It was hereditary, it could be brought on by stress, and there was very little anybody could really do apart from a few different things like PUVA, which is like a light treatment. Uh, in simple terms, it's where they kind of, it's like a sunbed where they burn your scalp and that distracts your immune system and, 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 and then maybe the, the hair then gets time to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, that didn't work for me. It ended up, it seemed to speed up my hair loss and um, I was told that there are lovely wigs and hair headscarves out there and if I needed somebody to talk to obviously that there was lots of support there for me. So this is what about nine years ago now. So that patch basically got bigger and eventually uh, it took over, Uh, it turned into alopecia universalis. So I think it was by December 2005, all of my hair, including my eyelashes and eyebrows, had fallen out. And that December, my 30th birthday was in January, and I was heading off to Australia for a month. Well, I was going to New York first and and then on to Australia. So it was devastating. I mean, for me, I was going off on this big trip to, uh, you know, celebrate my 30th birthday and... I looked in the mirror and I had like a little strand of hair either side of my, my side locks basically. I had, had two little strands of hair and a headscarf. So very, uh, very strange. So basically somebody had wiped me out, you know, somebody had kind of got a, I, I, I heard the, the, um, the, the term used as they raised your face. So basically, yeah. So I tried all sorts of lotions and potions and I, when I was in Australia, I went to Byron Bay and I did all sorts of fancy stuff and got all sorts of treatments done, but nothing really seemed to work. So for years then afterwards, I kind of had been researching and I'd been told that my hair would never come back. And I refused basically to kind of believe that or to accept that. So I constantly did my research, the good old Google and the internet and whatever. And I kind of what I what I did was the the more I researched, the more I seemed to see two words kept coming up uh, in everything that I I, I googled or, or researched, and it was inflammation and basically autoimmune were the, the two things that kept coming up. So I needed I knew I needed to reduce inflammation because that's why my immune You know, my immune obviously was attacking because of the inflammation in my body. So, um, so I put those, uh, both in and up pops, uh, wonderful, uh, Dr. Gilhooley, uh, from Glasgow and the Glasgow Clinic. And from there, that was, um, I think that was summer of 2009. And I suppose things just really changed from there. I, popped an email off to Dr. Gullahooley um, listing my different conditions, alopecia universalis being the main driver and just bits and pieces of other things that I had, other complaints and he highly recommended that I come visit, that he felt that this treatment LDN uh, could greatly help. So off I went, got on a plane and went off and, and saw him and I think it was probably something like October, kind of towards Christmas 2009 that I started on uh, LDN um, and also high dosage omega-3 as well, uh, so anti-inflammatory. Started on that and I think by January time, now I had not one hair on my head, 
I had actually, sorry, I lie, I had one hair. I had one little hair, one little spiky hair at the front of my head that I used to feel go right if only that would kind of grow and more would grow around it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, by by the January, lots of little tiny little white hairs had mm. started to kind of appear. But the strange thing was about this time, I didn't get excited. I wasn't holding a mirror up to a spotlight and investigating. I trusted that basically I had found what I needed to find and I relaxed, got on with my life and did what I needed to do and all of a sudden months seemed to have passed and the wig that I had been wearing that came off every evening, uh, all of a sudden every time I looked in the mirror there was more hair. So what, what are we at now? We're May 2011. So you could say a year and a half later, and I now have, I would say, 90% regrowth uh, on my head. My hair is black and white, so I've got patches of black and I've got patches of white, which many, many people tell me is actually really stylish. And, and did I go to a colour to, 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 get, to achieve that look? Mm-hmm. But that is how my hair has grown back, and I love it. I'm... Um, uh, extremely grateful. Um, I've been to the hairdressers today and got a trendy new haircut. Um, all of my other conditions, things like IBS, um, polycystic ovaries, um, other conditions like that have all greatly improved. Uh, so my overall health and well-being um, has changed. Uh, I lost weight, weight that I've been carrying around for years as well. I don't know whether that's to do with polycystic ovaries but um or maybe the emotional eating but uh the way it seemed to come off as well so all of a sudden somebody that had been wearing a wig and hiding under that wig for seven eight years or wearing headscarves and looking as though they're really sick uh, i am now feeling absolutely on top of the world and just love on every day and and i get the odd little patch here and there that will come back and it's a little warning to say angela get back on track and, 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 you know, we can take this away again. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's my story. You also said that you lost all your bodily hair, your eyebrows and eyelashes. I How long did that take to come back? So I think by the June 2010, my eyelashes and eyebrows had started to come back. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, they've come back dark. I'm very lucky they didn't come back white. Well, I mean, I wouldn't have minded, but my, I, do, I now have dark eyebrows and, and dark eyelashes, and, and uh, which is great because that's my original colour. And believe it or not, I still have uh, hairless legs. So <laughs> somebody up there is looking down and going, <laughs> deserves a little treat. So I, <laughs> I have silky smooth legs and hair on my head, which is absolutely wonderful. Well, better, the best way round, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when you first started, did you start on very low doses and work up? Yeah, I started on, I think it was three milligrams, and I'm now up at five. I, and some people may have side effects. Uh, I don't know whether I refused to, to accept that I had side effects, but it didn't seem to. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't seem to have any any issues at all. Just It seemed to agree with me, so... And what does your own GP think? They wish that it was they could do a little bit more for me here rather than me having to hop on a plane over to Glasgow. Uh, they know it's coming. My GP actually, uh, I think her husband works in some department of one of the hospitals in Belfast and seemed to think that, you know, word was about that they were looking into this a bit further. But I genuinely hope that you know people and I hear stories every single day about people with autoimmune conditions and inflammatory conditions such as eczema or or arthritis or anything really like that Mm -hmm. and you know quite severe sometimes and even people with alopecia I just hope that doctors out there will begin to acknowledge this and without sounding dramatic it's changed my life in just under two years what percentage of the population has alopecia, do you know? 
Um, no idea, but the thing about alopecia is it's hidden and people mm. are embarrassed about it. You know, the minute I lost my hair, I, I, I put on a headscarf and okay, I look sick for, you know, six months. I then very quickly went to the local wig shop and, and, and bought a wig and, you know, perfected my makeup. So I tried to look half normal. So people are hiding that the condition. Yes. Uh, for many years, I actually went to a, a clinic where they basically glued on a hair system onto my head that was removed once a month. So an even more semi, semi-permanent um, solution. But again, for me, that was just hiding the, the problem. It was just uh, covering over the problem. It wasn't dealing with it. And the minute I took off that semi-permanent hairpiece, began wearing the wigs and then, you know, began on LDN and, 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 and saw the, the, the changes every day over the, the, those months. Uh, for me, it was, yeah, it was dealing with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it was amazing. Well, that is a story and a half, isn't it? it really, is yeah. a good success story. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us, Angela. I really do appreciate it. No problem. My my pleasure. Thank you very much.